Hey, this is Aaron Stern here with a special edition tutorial, Digitsman Revisited. Before I begin, I'd like to share with you a little background regarding this lesson. Since I began posting tutorials at the cow site almost a year ago, the Digitsman tutorial kept its popularity and high rank. I still receive many emails and comments about it. And it looks like there was a problem for some people to create more than 7,000 characters in one text block. There were more than a few discussions about it in the cow forums and tutorial comments page. And I also offered a couple of workarounds. But this is not the only reason we are here today. In this special edition tutorial, I'll take my technique a step further and show you how you can create the same effect, but this time using a live footage, and also I'll attack it with a different approach, which is much simpler yet more lively, at least to my opinion. But it will require the use of a third-party plugin from trap code named Form. So first let's take a look what we'll be able to create this time around. Warning, this is a long episode, since I didn't want to split it into two parts and also due to the fact that I'm so obsessed with long and extended version from the early 80s. Let me explain. If you grew up in the 80s, you might remember that for every music single, which was also known by the name 7 inch, because this was the actual diameter size of the vinyl plastic record. So anyway, almost every 7 inch was also available as a maxi single, which was the big brother, its diameter was 12 inch of course, and for the most part, there was only one song on each side. But this 12 inch wasn't anything like the 7 inch. No, no, no. The maxi single usually included an extended remix, a long version, or a special dub mix, which gave a new interpretation for the same song. Well, I grew up then, and I must admit, I have a fetish for these maxi singles. I used to collect them for years, and now I think I've got more than 500 of them. Okay, nice story, but what's in it for me, you say? Well, nothing really. But think about it. The main problem with music from the 80s is that for so long, there is nothing new that came out, right? Well, if you're into maxi singles and special remixes, then that's not the case. Sometimes, you can still stumble on a new mix or a special version to the same song that you haven't heard before. Ah, what a joy. And this is exactly what we'll do today. A special remix for the Digitsman tutorial. So after this long and exhausting intro, let me introduce Digitsman, the Maxi Single Special Edition Mix. I'll begin by playing the main footage which we'll use here. Hello, hello, this is me on a green screen studio. Spinning around like a record baby, round, 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 round. Okay, enough of that. Let's drag this clip onto the Make New Comp icon and create a new comp from it, the same size and length. First, let's apply the key light effect to remove the green, so go to Effect, Keying, and choose Key Light. Sample the green color, open the Screen Matte options, Set the clip black to 4, the clip white to 80, and the screen shrink grow to minus 1. These settings will work great with this shot and will leave us with a nice clean key. Now select the clip in the timeline and right click on it. From the context menu choose Time, Enable Time Remapping. I want to change the rhythm of the clip and also to shorten it to 6 seconds. So I'll move towards the 9 seconds mark and add a new keyframe there. 
Now I'll select the last two keyframes and drag them until the 3 seconds mark. Now I'll go to the 6 seconds on this timeline and press the letter N. This will define a new working area. I'll right click on it and choose Trim Comp to Work Area. Now I want to relight myself. So convert the clip to be a 3D layer in order for the light to affect it and go to the last frame and from the layer menu choose to add a new light to the scene. Set the new light to point light and change the intensity to 125. I'll say OK to this and drag the light to the left of my ear and maybe drag it on the Z axis to something like this. Now we have more dramatic look to our source which will yield much better result when I'll use this as a source for the running digits. Let's create a RAM preview to check what we have until now. What a hunk spinning man, huh? Simply irresistible, I know, I know. Okay, moving on, please don't lose your focus. Next, we'll build the digit source for our running digit inside my head. So you can go to the comp window and choose to close all. Go back to the project window and press the make new comp button. Name this comp digits. Set the size to be 150 by 150 pixels. Aspect ratio should be square and the duration will be 6 seconds. Then click OK to approve. Take the text tool and set the font to be Arial Black, 155 pixels, and set the color to be pure green. That's 0 for the red, 255 for the green, and 0 again for the blue. Now type the digit 1 and move it so it will be at the center of the comp. Next, open the options for the text Add a character offset animator. Set a keyframe for 0 in the first frame. Move to the end of the timeline and change the value to 15. Make sure the text is still selected and go to Effect, Stylize and choose to add the Glow filter. Change the Glow radius to 20 and create a RAM preview. From the RAM preview you can see the result. In a moment, we'll use this comp as a source for our form effect. If you're happy with the result like me, you can close all the unneeded panels and move on to the next stage. So, moving on to the main thing. I'll create a new comp, name it Digitsman Revisited, set it to use the PAL Square Pixels preset, and make sure the duration will be 6 seconds, and choose OK. Now I'll drag both of the comps we've prepared into this comp and turn off the eyeball for both of them. We need these layers as a source for our effect, but for now we don't need to show them. Okay, we go to the most exciting part. Use Ctrl or Command plus Y and create a new solid layer. I'll name this layer Form, make sure it's comp size and choose a black color for it. I'll confirm this by hitting OK. Now go to the effect menu and apply trap code form. Oh by the way, if you don't have this effect you won't be able to follow this, but you can always go back and watch the original Digitman tutorial and accomplish it with no need for third party plugins. But as I noted before, here we are in the maxi single version. So I'm going to use trap code form. Basically, the form effect can form shapes on the screen based on particles and can also be attached to maps, layers and audio files. Let's see how we can benefit from this amazing complex plugin for our purpose. Open the base form and change the size X to 768 and size Y to 576. Then, increase the amount of particles in X to 150 and same for the Y. For particles in Z, set it to be 1. This will create a grid of particles that cover the whole comp 
but only one layer of particles is in Z space. It's worth mentioning at this stage that this effect is 3D aware and can use After Effects built-in camera for some really advanced animation. We'll get there soon, but for now, let's move on with our design. For now, I'm going to skip the particle section and come back to it momentarily. So let's move down and open up the layer maps. Open the color and alpha and set the layer to use our spinning head comp. Set the functionality to be lightness to A, meaning it will map the light value to the alpha. And finally set the map over to use XY. Now move on to the displacement. Change the functionality to individual XYZ. Map over to XY and define an only layer for Z as the spinning head layer. Let's return now to the particle section and work on them for a bit. Open the particle section and change the particle type to custom. Choose under custom the digits layer and change the time sampling to random loop. So we'll have a nice random animation for our particles. Next, move on to the size and change it to 4. Now, just cast your eyes for a moment to the comp screen and already you can see the magic starting to happen. Oh, but we are far from done. Let's also change the size random to say 50 and the transfer mode to lighten. I found that this works best here and it's due to the fact that we choose to add a glow effect to the particles themselves. So the lighten mode is much better to defining this look. Feel free to test of course the other options here to see what they look like. You can now close the particle section and let's go back to the displacement section and animate it. In the first frame of the timeline, set a keyframe for the strength at value of 1500. Now go to 3 seconds on your timeline and change it back to 0. The last thing I want to change here is to enable depth of field. So scroll down until you see the render mode and change it to use the full render plus DOF smooth. This will be visible in a short while when we'll add our 3D camera. And just so you know, the smooth option here will show a better depth of field than the After Effects built-in camera which tends to be a bit blocky. This is the reason why we choose this option. If you'll get a render hit, be sure to change it back to square. But for now, I will leave it like this, because I am a sucker for quality. Aren't you? So, in order to control our effect better, we need a camera in the scene. Go to the layer menu and add a new camera. Choose the 50mm preset and make sure to enable depth of field so we can see it in motion. Now, go to 3 seconds, press P to isolate the position properties of the camera and set a keyframe there. Now go back to the first frame and change the Z value to 0. This will push the camera very close to our form layer, but we want to start from a blank screen so drag the CTL to about 10 frames or so until you see nothing on the screen and press B to define the start of your work area. For design purposes, let's create a nice background to accompany our scene. So press Ctrl or Command plus Y to create a new solid. Name this layer BG, make sure it's comp size, color doesn't matter and choose OK. Move it behind all the other layers in the comp. Go to Effect, Generate and add the Ramp effect. Change the end color to dark green. Set the Ramp shape to use a radial ramp. Now zoom out a bit and drag the cursor position for the colors so the black will be just behind the face and the green position will be outside of the comb to the right, leaving only a hint of color, which should be sufficient enough for the atmosphere needed here. 
Let's check where we are now by doing a RAM preview. As you can see, using form as our digits generator and defining a video as the layer map for the particles, we make this effect look even better than the original 7-inch single release. I also think that the depth of field here really helps to upbeat this promo. Now, I'll stop the RAM preview, I'll return to the project panel and drag from there the end text comp. I built this comp using the same method I showed you here by using the form as a digits generator and also added simple text animation preset I've already demonstrated in the original digits man tutorial. I'll also drag the original audio mix numbers sound dot wav which surprisingly works perfect also here in the special edition version and let's move back to full screen and enjoy the final outcome. Fooling around with so many digits and numbers remind me of a great quote from an unforgettable 80s movie directed by Rob Reiner. The movie is of course When Harry Met Sally and it goes something like this. I'm gonna be 40! When? Someday! In 8 years! But it's there, it's sitting there like a big dead end and it's not the same for men. Charlie Chaplin had kids when he was 73! Yeah, but he was too old to pick them up. Yeah, please forgive my lame acting skills, hope I didn't kill the joke. Anyway, until next time we'll meet, don't stop dealing with numbers and more importantly, don't forget to tune up for the next show coming up, Digits Man, the special edition. This is Eran Stern for Creative Cow saying goodbye.